What's up? My name is Technobe here for Toolshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll be showing you how to optimize Destiny 2 for the latest DLC, Witch Queen. This, of course, will apply to future updates of Destiny 2, but this is a good place to start. Speaking of start, I'm only going to lightly touch on Windows optimizations and later we'll get into depth in the in-game settings. However, if you'd like to get even more out of your computer, in the description down below, you'll find links to Windows 10 and 11 optimization guides, as well as NVIDIA ones too. But anyways, let's start with some quick Windows optimization. Go ahead and update Windows and your graphics card driver if you haven't already. Hit start, type in update, and go through the Windows update process. Then for your graphics card, in the description down below, you'll find download links for Intel, AMD, and Nvidia. You can either download and install the latest drivers through those links, or of course, if you have software like NVIDIA GeForce Experience, you can use that to update your graphics card driver instead. Speaking of updates, is it worth moving from Windows 10 to Windows 11 for performance? No, there's no specific features in Windows 11 that give you extra performance that make it worthwhile to move from 10 to 11. The only reason you should do it is because you like the new features or you're ready to go through the huge learning curve of the different UI. That's why I'm sticking to Windows 10. Then let's go ahead and clear out some extra space on your drives, which is especially important if they're near capacity. Hit start, type in cleanup, and open disk cleanup as administrator. When it opens, choose C drive and click OK. Wait for it to scan, and when it pops up, simply take everything on the list except for a recycle bin, which you can go through and clear out later manually, and thumbnails down here if you use lots of pictures on your computer. Then click OK, delete files, and wait for this deletion process to finish. If you have your game installed to a different drive, make sure to open it up once again as admin and select that drive instead. Say D drive and follow through the exact same steps. When it's done, hold start and press R and inside of this run dialog, type percentage, temp percentage and hit enter. Then a new file browser will open up. Hit control A to select everything, then shift delete to delete them, skipping the recycle bin. Click yes, wait for it to scan and click continue if necessary with do this for all checked. If you see any areas like this, click do this for all and skip. Rinse and repeat for all the errors you ran into. When it's done, you should be saving a ton of space on your computer. Then head back to this PC, C drive and Windows. Inside of here, scroll down to temp. Once again, control A, shift delete and enter. Skip all errors. And now we're done clearing out temporary and leftover files on our computer. Now let's get into the power plan. Hit start, type in power space plan and click on choose a power plan. Inside of here, you'll likely have balanced, power saver, as well as high performance options with one of the first two selected. Simply choose high performance and you should immediately notice a difference. If you have CPU specific high performance plans, pick these instead. If you'd like to try out the ultimate performance power plan, in the description down below, you'll find a bit of code that you can copy. Hit start, type in CMD, run it as admin, and paste it in here with Control V, then hit enter. Upon doing so and refreshing your power options screen, you should see a brand new power performance plan. Select this and you should immediately notice an improvement in performance. Now let's go ahead and optimize our running programs on our computer and programs that start up with our computer. Press Control Shift and Escape all at once to bring up the Windows Task Manager. On the Processes tab, you can sort by CPU, Memory and GPU to see what is using what on your computer. The fewer background programs you have running, the more resources you have available for your game to take and run at the best performance possible. Then we'll be heading across the Startup tab at the very top. Inside of here, sort by status and everything listed as enabled starts up when your computer logs in. You can find unwanted programs, right click and click disable. That way, you'll have to manually start them yourself, speeding up the startup process, and of course, you'll have less programs to close when you want to play a game. If you're a power user, head across to services at the very top, click open services, and inside of here, sort by startup type. Everything listed as automatic starts up with your computer. Double click unwanted services and change it from automatic to manual. That way, either you or a program has to start it up when it's necessary. Don't change them to disabled. This is a very basic guide on optimizing things that start up with your computer and instead in the description down below you'll find a really in-depth guide that shows you how to get to programs that aren't even listed here. Of course, if you're one who uses overlays such as the Discord overlay, those could decrease FPS and increase input latency. If you don't actively use them or you don't actively need them, you should try turning off overlays that you don't use. This includes performance monitoring overlays, which you shouldn't have running unless you're specifically benchmarking games. 
Every tiny bit of available resources matter when you're trying to get the most out of your computer. Finally, let's get into some game specific ones. For this, you'll need to know exactly where the game is installed. As far as I know, you can only get this game on Steam. So that's exactly what I'll show you here. Simply locate and select Destiny 2, then right click it in your Steam library, hover over manage and choose browse local files. Inside of here, we'll find all of the Destiny 2 files. What we're looking for is destiny2.exe rather than the destiny2launcher.exe. Right click destiny2.exe and choose properties. Then inside of here, on the compatibility tab, make sure to click change high DPI settings. Inside of here, tick this bottom tick box, select the application and click OK. Then for some users, when you're playing the game in full screen mode, it plays in a faux full screen mode that's half windowed, half full screen instead of fully exclusive full screen. Some people find that they get an FPS boost or input latency decrease when they have this option here ticked, disable full screen optimizations. For me, this doesn't do much, but of course for you it may do something. When you're done with this optimization guide, come back here and try the game with this ticked and unticked and see if you notice any kind of positive difference. Whatever works better for you, stick to that way. Then click OK or apply and OK. When we're done with that, locate the text at the very top here, the folder path, right click and choose copy address as text. Then hit start, type in GPU. Then inside of here, make sure that hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is turned on and under graphics performance preference, select desktop app and then click browse. Then at the very top, click in an empty space, control V to paste and enter. Now we're inside of the game's install folder. Double click destiny2.exe and it'll be added to the list. Then click options and choose high performance, then save. If you got it on the Xbox app or somewhere else, if it's available there, Choose Microsoft Store app from the drop down instead and select it from the drop down list over here. Then simply repeat the same steps. Then, when you're done with that, click Home in the top left. Now choose Gaming. Inside of the Xbox Game Bar tab, make sure that this is turned off unless you specifically use the Xbox Game Bar. Then, the Game Mode tab, make sure that this is turned on. If you're someone who's used the Xbox Game Bar before or you have it installed, it's a good idea to make sure that Microsoft's version of Shadowplay isn't running in the background, constantly recording your screen. Hit Start, type in Xbox, and open the Xbox Game Bar. Then, click Settings at the very top and head across to the Capturing tab, where you'll make sure that Record in the background while I'm playing a game is unchecked. Then, click Anywhere to close this. Now finally, before we actually launch up the game itself, we need to know if the game is GPU or CPU limiting us so we can optimize further. When you're in a demanding scene or running a benchmark in game, hit Control Shift and Escape to bring up the Windows Task Manager. Head across to the Performance tab and simply see if your GPU is hitting 100% all the time or your CPU is hitting 100%. Whatever is maxed out all the time is what you're limited by. If you find that your graphics card is holding you back, it's a good idea to disable hardware acceleration in other programs on your computer, most importantly browsers. This includes Chrome, Firefox, and programs based on Electron and similar frameworks like Discord and Steam. In Discord, for example, head across to User Settings in the bottom left, then on the Advanced tab, you'll find hardware acceleration that you can turn off. By doing so, Discord and other programs will use more of your CPU instead of your GPU in the background. They may become more stuttery when lots of animations and video decoding or encoding are going on, so it may be a good idea to re-enable these later when you're not playing super demanding games. Of course, the alternative is to simply close those programs as well, including your browser. Speaking of CPU or GPU limited, if you find that you're CPU limited instead of GPU, which this guide is mainly going to focus on in just a bit when we get to the in-game settings, it may be a good idea to actually raise some of the settings in-game to balance out your computer. If you're CPU limited, you'll find that no matter how low you drop your in-game graphics settings, you won't gain any performance. Instead, the game will just look worse and worse while keeping the same performance. If you find that that's happening, it's a good idea to crank some settings up, especially ones that you may notice more than others, such as lighting and shadow effects. But anyways, with that out of the way, let's get into more game-specific options and finally launch up the game itself. Quickly, before we actually launch the game, inside of Steam, right-click Destiny 2, click Properties, and in the General tab, you'll find Launch Options. Inside of here, type hyphen use all available cores as such, and this way it'll tell the game to use every core that's available on your computer instead of limiting itself down to just a few. This way you can instantly gain a couple of FPS, especially if you have a CPU with lots of cores on it. A lot of Destiny players don't even know about this option. Then click close and fire up the actual game. So currently in game, I'm sitting around 150 FPS 
on the absolute highest settings, which is what you'd expect on an incredibly expensive 3080 Ti. However, if you're watching an optimization guide, you likely don't have something near that. Don't worry, that's exactly what this video is here for. It's here for everyone. Hit escape whenever you get into game or into the main menu and open up the settings screen over here. Then head across to the video tab and inside of here, the window mode should absolutely be set to full screen. Then resolution should be set to a resolution that matches your display or a supported resolution, otherwise things will end up blurry and or stretched. VSync should be set off unless you're specifically getting screen tearing where the top half renders before or after the bottom half. Frame rate cap should be set to off unless you're say recording and the game is using too much of your GPU or for some other reason you'd just like to limit the amount of FPS. You can turn that on here and adjust the frame rate cap right below it. I'll be leaving this off, which is better. The field of view down here, completely user preference, and how it affects your FPS isn't important compared to how it affects your gameplay. Screen bounds and brightness are of course both user preference and shouldn't affect your FPS. Then we get down to the advanced video section. This is where you'll get a ton of your FPS. Of course, as per usual, the more you crank things down here, the more FPS you'll be getting in game in most cases. So of course you can set the Preset up here to whatever matches your PC. On highest, I got around, what was it, 150, all the way down to low. Some changes require a restart. I'm sitting at around 170-ish, so I'm probably CPU limited with such a powerful graphics card. Don't worry, between high and low settings for you, however, you should definitely notice an FPS change if you're GPU limited. Heading back to the settings video, we'll start running through the options here to see what exactly we can get out of your PC. Usually I'd start with say the medium preset or the low preset if you're really struggling to get FPS. For me, I'll start on medium. Anti-aliasing I don't find important and it just gets rid of jagged edges which I don't mind too much, but it does have a slight performance cost. I'd set this to off. Screen space ambient occlusion is really cheap to run on your computer and usually won't cause any issues. It's not like ray tracing reflections, they just add a nice reflection to the game. You can either have this set to HDAO or off, it doesn't really matter, though of course having this on anything but off will cause a slight FPS impact, so you may want to turn this down if you're really into PvP and things like that. Texture anisotropy, you can turn this up as high as you want, there's really no impact on this, it just makes the game look a little bit better. The texture quantity is what has the biggest impact on the way the game looks. Completely depends on the amount of VRAM in your computer. Usually you'd set this to high and forget about it just because things look really good. Up at the very top you can see the VRAM usage based on the currently selected options. If you have anything more than 2 gigs, it seems, you can crank these settings up pretty high. The texture quality I'd usually leave on highest between the lowest at 1.2 gigs total usage and the highest at 2.7, there's only really a 1.5 gig difference between the options here. So you'd usually want to set this to high unless you're really struggling for VRAM as this does have a huge impact on how the game looks. Shadow quality is something you're not necessarily going to be focusing on all the time and you can crank this down, especially if you're into PvP rather than staring at the environment. Depth of field, I'd usually turn this completely off just so I can see things in the distance a lot more clearly. Environment detail distance, you can leave this on medium or low, though if you notice things start to pop in weirdly, you can turn it up to medium. Character detail distance, you'd usually leave at low, otherwise if you're annoyed by the way that characters sort of pop into higher detailed models, you can leave this on medium. Foliage detail distance, you can turn this all the way down, as once again you're not always going to be staring at the environment, that's just something that'll eat away at your FPS for not too much gain. Foliage shadows distance, once again, you'd crank this down as low as possible as you're not going to be staring at shadows while you're fighting other players. Light shafts, of course, do make the game look quite nice when there's light shining in from above, cave entrances, etc. You may want to have this on higher options, but medium is good and that's as low as the game goes. Motion blur, I'd absolutely recommend turning this off unless you like the cinematic look. Wind impulse, I'm not entirely too sure what this is, but I think it has to do with some abilities that have a wind effect. You can leave this on, but if you notice FPS drops while you're doing certain moves and things like that, you may want to turn this off. Render resolution, you should leave it 100%, unless you're absolutely struggling for FPS with everything else turned down. You should use this over here to lower your resolution in-game, rather than using the option at the very top, so that things don't look too blurry when you're changing them here instead. HDR, user preference, and it doesn't seem to have too much of an impact. Chromatic aberration, you should turn off as it just helps you see a bit better, as well as film grain down here. 
If you're a streamer or someone who records it, you may want to have foam grain on in order to make your graphics card work a bit harder at encoding the video, which usually results in using more bitrate, but of course results in a cleaner looking video. If you're bitrate limited, such as say on Twitch, you may want to turn this off however. The sound tab is user preference, but I usually turn down the music as it can be a bit much sometimes. Same with voice chat if you have noisy teammates. Other than that, the gameplay tab over here, it's all user preference, except for maybe the FPS display that you may want to turn on to see the impact of your settings here. As for the rest of the settings here, there's not much else we need to talk about. At the very bottom, you'll find some information on your network NAT type, which currently for me is moderate. If I went through port forwarding, you can open this up pretty easily. If you'd like a guide on port forwarding, I'll have one linked down below. And if you'd like one specifically for Destiny 2, if I haven't already got one, leave a comment down below and I'll probably get around to making one at some stage. Hitting escape, we're back in game. Things look just as good as they were on the highest quality, mostly because of the textures, and it should be running a lot smoother for you especially if you were GPU limited before. If you find that you're CPU limited instead, you can usually turn up some settings and make the game look a bit better without any real performance impact. That way you can balance things out more instead of having it limited completely one way or the other. Of course, do remember to restart if you haven't already and you made large changes, that way things can apply. Once again, if you'd like to get more out of your PC, in the description down below, you'll find Windows 10, Windows 11 and Nvidia optimization guides as well. But anyways, that's really about it for this quick video. Thank you all for watching. My name is Techno over here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.